Welcome back to Breakfast. The gap between the rich and poor is now the largest it's ever been. A report from Statistics New Zealand shows low incomes have fallen and high incomes have risen in the past year and hardship rates for children have spiked. With us to, now to explain what the figures mean is Infometrics economist Matt Nolan. Good morning to you, Matt. Tell us, we know morning. this is a record, but how significant has the increase been on the previous year? It was quite a lift off the previous year, but it isn't really a trend of rising inequality in of itself. What we've seen in that one year is there was a big return on investor income and farmer income as commodity prices went up. There was a high unemployment rate, so a lot of other people in society lost a bit of money that year. But it's just a snapshot of what happened, not an indication of the entire trend of inequality in the economy. So is it perhaps an indication that the rich have come out of the financial crisis better off than the poor? I wouldn't say that per se. In the June 2009 and June 2010 figures, the rich did a lot worse off. The Gini coefficient, which is the figure that shows inequality, actually got a lot better in terms of lower inequality. And it just spiked again in 2011. So we're seeing movements around. We need to wait a few years to see where things settle, exactly what has happened coming out of this crisis. How much is the inequality in New Zealand offset by policies like working for families? Or is it not, because it's, it's already uh, encapsulated in these figures? Oh, it is included in the figures, but if we look over at the trend over time, we can see working for families come into the figures. We can see that it did lower inequality. Before that inequality was rising, due to a number of factors such as an ageing population, people getting more education than before, which was leading to more inequality within society. Not necessarily a bad thing, but true. Then working for families came in and helped people out that were poor. It helped ease that inequality measure. So that's to say if we didn't have this policy presently, these figures would look a lot worse? They would look worse in terms of the inequality figure being higher. But one thing I really want to point out here is having this sort of measure where we're told right now people have different incomes isn't necessarily a bad thing. We would expect, we would even want some form of inequality in this sense. We want income to be distributed fairly, but a 19-year-old who's working at the warehouse and a 55-year-old who's working a highly skilled job should get different incomes. So is it necessarily an, in an indication then that we've got a lot of poverty or just that there's a big gap between the very rich and the poor? The inequality index doesn't tell us much about that per se, but there was figures about poverty. And the most concerning was the child poverty figures. They haven't gotten worse, but when you're thinking about equality of opportunity, giving people a chance, that's not something you want to say. So we know, I guess, from a social perspective that inequality is not desirable. What does it actually mean for the economy? Is it a bad thing um, in terms of getting it started? In terms of the economy generally, the inequality figure doesn't really mean much to us at all. The only thing we got out of here, if we looked at the economy in a, in a general sense like that, is that people were struggling in June 2011. Incomes were falling and households, as a result, really didn't want to spend. And that's exactly what we knew before. So this is our worst reading on record, but how do we actually match up internationally? Oh, we're very similar to Australia, Canada, which are very similar countries to us. Similar to the UK, although the very wealthy in the UK are quite a bit wealthier. We're not nearly as unequal in the sense as the United States and nowhere near as unequal as countries like China with this huge, huge inequality. Scandinavia has a lot more equality than us. If we were to see that unemployment rate at 6.7% currently start, or is it 6.8, start to come down, um, is that going to help to reduce the inequality? Most definitely. The high unemployment rate, especially amongst people that are in the lower income deciles, the people with lower incomes, is causing a lot of that big jump we've seen recently. Thank you very much for your time. That is Matt Nolan from Infometrics.